Okay. Right, guys, pictures up. Pictures up. Pictures up. Let's roll sound. Rolling. Rolling. Sound speed. Hello, welcome to Meet Me at the Movies Open Dialogue. Noel T. Manning the second here, and really excited to have Marco Bill Trami with us. Uh, Marco is an amazing composer, and if you've seen films like uh, Renfield, uh, the Scream series, uh, even the documentary like Free Solo, uh, or even The Quiet Place, uh, you may have heard some of Marco's work. Uh, we're really happy today to have him uh, on the show uh, talking about Silent Night, uh, the new John Woo film. Uh, and uh, we'll also get a chance to, to talk uh, to Marco about family uh, and about maybe future projects he may be working on with John Woo. So uh, let's take a listen and look right here at Silent Night's composer, Marco Beltrami. Awesome. Well, thanks again for taking the time and for uh, for doing this. I uh, really appreciate it. Uh, I always uh, am always excited when I see your name attached to films. So uh, it's always a joy when I see that. And uh, this film, I uh, got a chance to uh, interview uh, Joel um, um, uh, about it and about his work in it. Uh, and it was nice to be able to talk to someone from an acting standpoint who had to work in this film that there was so much uh, action and um, less dialogue, but more of that intense intensity that you have to put forth uh, when you're were an actor. Uh, you know, he, he, it was yeah. you know Joel was talking about how uh, sometimes you don't realize what a crutch dialogue is because <laughs> you can yeah, say I mean, things. Had to without without dialogue, I, I imagine in a way it makes it even harder as an actor. Yeah, absolutely. He said you had you had to use your eyes, you had to use your full body, and he said you had to make it feel as if it were organic and real. And I, uh, Silent yeah. Night, uh, just a really interesting concept with with John Woo uh, bringing this this action film with a with a Christmas slant to life, um, but doing it with with very limited dialogue, just kind of background dialogue, uh, ambient dialogue. I guess is probably the best way to describe it. So. Tell me your story on how uh, how Marco Beltrami got a chance to to be a part of this this unique project. Yeah, I mean, I met um, I met John through the picture editor Zach Steinberg, who uh, uh, we had done some work before, and um, he recommended me to John. I had a meeting and uh, hit it off, and um, they showed me some of the picture uh, when they were in the process of editing and. Um, I immediately had some ideas. I put some ideas together. John responded to it, and and uh, we were able to proceed. So, so you knew right off the bat that it was going to be uh, heavy on atmospheric um, sound design and music score. Yeah, I mean the uh, the fact that there was no dialogue in it uh, was a good indicator. The things that were working in terms of temp, there was a little bit of temp that he was putting in. Um, demonstrated that. And when I started working on ideas, it, it became clear, you know, it was going to be, you know, a, a little more focused on that than ordinary. So Marco, I know this is not your first time getting involved with a film that has no or very limited dialogue. I think about A Quiet Place, for example. So maybe uh, share, if you would, uh, what it was like to go back to the well, or maybe find something new and different for this film to bring it uh, a bit of a, a freshness. Uh, but this is a very different movie and the things I was doing with it were, were different. Um, the one thing that I did, um, when, I, when I did work on Quiet Place, one of the things we started experimenting was with having these two pianos, one detuned a little bit different from the other down, uh, a semitone, uh, a quarter tone rather. And um, uh, we played around with that a little bit more in this. In fact, right when you uh, see see uh, Joel's character 
in the hospital and 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 he's he has this this frustration and this nagging um obsession with everything that's happened to him and and his son uh i introduced this very simple motive that features these two pianos uh just a single note but um played uh, semitone apart quarter tone apart and it um um i think that became a motive for the film um as, as one of the, the motives driving the character so when you hear that you almost you feel his obsession and it the the link with his his um uh rage and and everything else so yeah uh so that was that was one of the first things um i worked on on the film and 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 john was very responsive to that in fact the uh the first scene i showed him was when um when godlock gets shot in the throat and uh and that scene introduces this motive um after that the, the challenge was to come up with a theme for the music box and i was i felt strongly you know after talking to john john wanted it to be something that could evolve into a main theme, like an emotional theme for, for the movie as well. So um, that was probably the biggest challenge, like coming up with something that worked as a simple music box theme, but also could be expanded into a larger emotional context. And um, um, and yeah, and you can, you, can, you can hear that, for instance, when he goes into the his kid's bedroom uh, and when he um, um, goes to the cemetery and at the end of the movie and uh, throughout, throughout, whenever he's thinking about his son, you hear this, this theme. So in a way, the, um, the score to this film is very, it's very concrete ideas that are, you know, it's, everything is related. It's not, it's not, um, there's no like real one-off cues or anything. It's all, it's all sort of the integrated score. Um, and I think uh, that's, that's one of the, one of the things I, I'm proud of with this. Yeah. Yeah. Is, um, is that something that you prefer? Do you prefer that, thematic quality that you have these threads that run throughout uh, or do you prefer the other or does it just depend on the project it depends a little bit on the project um i i definitely f for this movie yeah I, I i thought it should be you know like you mentioned uh joel's character is so focused and everything he's doing there's no dialogue and it's sort of carrying the narrative of the story and by having simple themes that develop um, uh, as a through line for it. It's like you can sort of bring the viewer on this journey, this emotional journey with the characters. And um, and so I think by having the music be simple along those lines and develop it, it's, it, it's maybe an effective way to doing it as opposed to having a different piece of music for every scene. Um, I mean, there are movies where that works for, and we did, for instance, that movie Renfield. There, it, it's completely disparate pieces of music that, I, I mean, there's thematic connections and all, but it's very motivic. There's different themes for different characters and there's different, it's right. all over the map stylistically, which right. was one of the fun things about it. Yeah, that's what the movie called for, but that, that wasn't the case on this. This is more of like a concentrated um, singularity of mindset that um, I think that John was after with the characters and everything. But one of the things that, that John did with this, with this film, and also we go back to the, to the screenplay itself. Uh, it, it is, you know, the first 50 minutes or so is a drama. I mean, you're oh. looking at, at, at a tragedy yeah. of loss before it even kicks into the real action. And then it's like, wow, it's, uh, you know, for, 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 for those that are expecting just a typical action film, this is not that. And, and that's something that I really appreciated about it. Uh, and from a, from a music standpoint, uh, you, you had to, to keep that in mind as well, didn't you? 
Yeah, I mean the um, the it, it's fun. It's like you have this this brewing um, intensity to it, and then when uh, when when uh, Godlock goes on his uh, training mission to do this, it's like you're gearing up. You bring all these these elements together, and it's and it's leading up to what's going to be a showdown. Uh, it's um, it's you know John handles this stuff so well cinematically, it, and um, uh, just letting him guide me in terms of what we're, we're what, how we're approaching it and what we're doing was really I, I, I learned a lot. Um, um, and he would um, you know he doesn't speak a lot, but I would I like for instance I had I had a, a piece of music for the scene um, when Godluck um, pulls pulls up to the the house and he. Um, uh, then he has a flashback of his son playing soccer on the lawn. And I originally had um, a, another piece of music there. Um, I forgot what it was. Uh, and he, he described that scene and what it's supposed to do. And as soon as, as, soon as he started describing it, it, it became clear to me, um, you know, what the music needed to do. So wow. I mean, it's that great symbiosis which uh, between director and composer, which – is is um, it's not always easy to find because you know music is an abstract language and how you so but uh, being able to tap into to each other is is really important and I I feel like we're able to do that which is great. You, you talk about that that relationship with the director that is so crucial or can be so crucial in, in what you're able to to bring uh, to the screen. Uh, who else would you say is probably the most uh, important, um, you know, crew member that you would uh, have to work work with uh, to to bring that score to life? Uh, yeah, no, I mean uh, it's really, uh, well, it's, you know, it's the editor Zach um, and John and uh, and me and and Buck who who you met uh, and. Um, works here in the studio with me. Uh, it, it was really the four of us um, with all the meetings and talking about and, you know, brainstorming. And um, it was, it was really a, a collaborative effort by uh, all of us in terms of yeah. uh, what, you know, the, what the score was going to be and um, um, the direction of the picture and how the, the picture is informing the score and vice versa. Yeah, and I know that you and I talked before, and previously we talked about how there are times you're brought in before a project really even starts, and then sometimes you're brought in when the projects are underway. Uh, you had mentioned uh, this one was somewhat underway. You were already seeing yeah. um, pieces before you were brought in. What was the the time frame for uh, when you were brought in, and how how long were you uh, part of this project? Um, oh boy, uh, I mean, it was a good amount of time. It wasn't like. Um five months or something. I, it seemed, seemed like, okay. wow. I had, yeah. I had to go back to Mexico and do some additional photography or some reshoots or something, uh, along the, the way. Um, Oh, one of the neat things about it, the, this film is that, um, uh, so my, I have, I have three, three sons, two of whom are very musical. I <laughs> have, uh, a 17 year old who's a, he's a, really good drummer and a uh, 23 year old who's a, um, sorry, 24 year old who's a uh, really good guitarist. So um, uh, Zach was talking about for the end credits, um, wouldn't it be a neat idea to do almost like a, a cover version of Silent Night, um, maybe on guitar? And I was thinking, oh yeah, well, that's great. So I, I gave the task to my, to my son and he did this end credit thing. He did the whole arrangement and, and wrote it. And, um, uh, and I, I, it came out beautifully, you know, then we put some, some orchestra with it too. And, um, I was really excited. And, and for all the, um, the drumming stuff, which when he starts going on his, um, uh, you know, training and, and, and rampage, uh, uh, this constant, um, drum through line that's going through it, sort of the, the rhythm of it is is all my other sons. So just being able to work with my kids was a lot of fun. I mean, it really makes it makes it makes it a lot of fun. 
I love that. And, and that's, you know, this film itself is about family, about, uh, yeah. you know, uh, the uh, a father and, and a son and that connection and that importance of the relationship of family. I love that. I, I had no idea. That's great. Is yeah. this the first time they've been, been able to work with you on uh, on a film project? Um, like, like this? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've done, um, my son, Tristan helped me on, uh, just isolated things, uh, on, uh, he did something on the movie free solo and, um, he did something for the other documentary, the way I see it. Um, yeah. but, um, but this was, you know, I wasn't giving him any direction. I was just like, can you do an arrangement of <laughs> And he came up with that, and I was just really, I was really happy. So, oh, that's awesome! That's yeah. awesome! That's yeah. awesome! I, I can see the pride in you yeah. from a dad. I see yeah. that, man. That's awesome. I love it. I love it. Well, Marco, I really appreciate you taking the time uh, to be with us, talking about uh, Silent Night. Any final thoughts or comments you want to make sure you share uh, about this project, about about this film, and uh, maybe uh, some joy, other joy you got out of this. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm I'm really thankful to have met John, and uh, I um, I really enjoyed working on this. I I said in um, another interview uh, uh, a little while ago that it sort of brought me back to like, the beginning days of when I was scoring because I it was I had that much fun um, working on things, and and he was so. It was such a supportive environment, like supporting, um, trying stuff and, and creativity and not being beholden to any particular temp ideas or anything like that. There was really a lot of freedom. And um, and I'm, I'm really happy, you know, we're working on his next project, which is The Killer uh, for Universal. And, uh, and that is really, again, just having a blast and... Um, so, yeah, I'm really thankful to uh, both Zach and John. And, uh, um, uh, yeah. Yeah. The, well, you, you've created this this fluid relationship. And we've talked about this before as well, that, you know, once you work with a director one time and you find you have this chemistry, the second, third, multiple times down the road, it just it, it really does become oh, just yeah. – Flu, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I know that you're uh, even more excited now that you you kind of know what you're in for. Yeah, totally, totally. All right, well, man, I appreciate it. Uh, thanks again, and I, I look forward to talking to you uh, next time about the next John Woo picture uh, once it's out as well. Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah, I can't wait. Okay. Yeah, I'm having, that's going to be a good one. Thanks again to uh, Marco Beltrami for uh, spending time with us right here on Meet Me at the Movies Open Dialogue as we talk about John Woo's film Silent Night, uh, which you can find in theaters uh, this holiday season. So for Meet Me at the Movies Open Dialogue, until next time, I'm an old team Manning the second. That's a wrap. Thank you.